Cataracts 101, the basics. Has your doctor told you that you have a cataract? Did you used to be able to see images like this? But now that you're older, it looks something more like that? Well, you're not alone in this. More than 2.5 million Canadians are affected by cataracts. You probably have a lot of questions about what a cataract is, how it develops, and how it can be treated. Well, you've come to the right place because we'll be discussing this plus more in the rest of the video. Let's start off with the basics. Light from your environment passes through the cornea and into your eye through the pupil. Light then passes through the lens and travels to the back of the eye to hit the retina. It is here that light is converted to a message to be carried to the brain. A cataract occurs when the lens of your eye begins to harden and become cloudy. This cloudy lens blocks light from entering your retina, similar to how a dirty car windshield blocks light from shining through. A cataract can develop in either one or both of your eyes. Some of the symptoms of cataracts include sensitivity to light, poor central vision, inability to differentiate colors, impaired night vision, and double vision. There are many risk factors associated with developing age-related cataracts, such as family history, diabetes, smoking, alcoholism, eye injury, and excessive sun exposure. Currently, the only treatment is surgical cataract removal, and there are no widespread pharmacological treatments to prevent or delay cataract formation. Now let's look at the formation of cataracts. One major protein in the lens is alpha-crystalline, and it prevents the clumping together or aggregation of other lens proteins. Unfortunately, with increasing age, we get a decrease in the amount of alpha-crystalline. This is not good because it means when chemical damage is done to the lens proteins, they are more susceptible to aggregation. These aggregated lens proteins affect the ability of the eye to let light pass through normally, which reduces visual clarity. One chemical that has been shown to cause damage to the lens is nitrogen oxide. In one study, scientists took lens and bathed them in solutions containing high levels of nitrogen oxide. They found that high nitrogen oxide levels are destructive to the lens and inhibit the transport of proteins that are required for normal lens function. Individuals with diabetes tend to have higher levels of nitrogen oxide and thus are at an increased risk of developing cataracts. As previously mentioned, the only treatment for cataracts is surgical removal. More than 9.5 million cataract surgeries are performed worldwide each year. The good news is that more than 95% of patients who have the surgery report improvements in their vision, so it's a very effective procedure. Surgery is recommended once your vision interferes with daily activities such as reading and driving. In this procedure, the cloudy lens is removed and replaced with an artificial lens, also known as an intraocular lens, that sits in the natural lens capsule. There are many different types of intraocular lenses which suit various patients' needs. Monofocal intraocular lenses are the most common lens chosen for seeing distance and are suitable for patients who suffer from glare during the day. However, these lenses do not change shape, and therefore, glasses are required for near vision. Multifocal intraocular lenses can simultaneously focus on images of targets located at different distances from the eye, so you don't need reading glasses after cataract surgery. Some problems associated with this type of lens include glare and halos. Toric intraocular lenses are used for treating patients who also have a pre-existing corneal astigmatism, which is a vision condition caused by an irregularly shaped cornea. Technology for this surgery has continued to improve, and now lasers and computer technology can be used to make precise surgical incisions without damaging surrounding tissues in the eye. After surgery, you have to wear an eye patch for a while, and you must keep the eye sanitized to prevent infection. Although it is an effective procedure, there are certain risks associated with the surgery. 
Serious complications such as retinal detachment and endophthalmitis are very uncommon, with an occurrence of about 0.8% and 0.1% respectively. If retinal detachment is not properly treated, it can cause permanent vision loss. Endophthalmitis, which is the inflammation of the internal coat of the eye, can also lead to decreased or permanent loss of vision. One of the more common post-operative complications with an incidence of about 2.4% is posterior capsular opacification. In this situation, the back of the lens capsule begins to thicken. However, it can be easily treated with a laser. Hopefully this video was able to address any questions you had about cataracts. If you still have any questions, then make sure to contact a healthcare professional or check the links posted below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.